Hey everyone, how's it going? Alex with Jeeps Limited. Today we're going to be installing the Baxter Performance Oil Filter Adapter on a 2016 Jeep Wrangler with a 3.6 liter Pentastar. Uh, what this does is it replaces the cartridge style filter with a regular screw-on oil filter. Uh, the main reason for this is these 3.6 Pentastars, they don't have anything that keeps the oil from draining back out of the oil filter, so you get a dry start uh, every time you start the vehicle, which is not good for the vehicle. This has an anti-drain back device in it, so it'll keep the oil in the filter and uh, help keep the vehicle primed so that when you do start it, you don't have a dry start. This should be a pretty simple install. It only requires a couple of tools, a uh, 15 16 socket to get the old filter housing or filter cap off, a one inch socket to screw this in. Uh, you need two Allen keys and a 15 16 wrench. Uh, I'll kind of show you guys step by step how we do this. It's probably only going to take about 15 or 20 minutes, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We're going to be using a Wix filter. It's a 57045. Uh, that's the filter that I saw them using on the install video on Northridge where I purchased this. The directions uh, do call out a different Wix filter, but uh, I'm going to guess they're all pretty much about the same. You can use other brand of filters as well, but we're just going to be using the Wix filter here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just remove the engine cover. Um, I don't even typically always run that on there. Uh, so this right here is the cap to the oil filter. Uh, on a stock model, uh, that would be black. Uh, that's how they come from the factory. Mine is orange, only because that's an aftermarket uh, housing there. So the first thing we're going to do is just uh, take our 15 16 and uh, unscrew that and take the oil filter out. Mine is only that wet because I actually just started the car a few minutes ago. Typically, if it's been sitting a while, that uh, filter will actually be pretty dry. Uh, hence the reason for the dry start. Uh, so you can just set that aside because you're really not going to need that anymore. All right, so next on the uh, adapter here, we put a little bit of oil just off that filter on that seal just to get it wet. What we're gonna do here, uh, we're just gonna thread this in there until it bottoms out. And then we have to find one of these two ports that'll be available where you can access it because there's a little Schrader valve that has to go in there. Uh, and before we thread this in, we're just gonna make sure that right here, these grooves on the lock are lined up so that it'll thread in. You'll notice we didn't put any of the other seals on yet just for this test fit. All right, so right there, it's uh, pretty much bottomed out by hand. We have to figure out which one of these valves we're gonna be able to utilize. And actually, I think valve on this side, I'm gonna mark it. I know which one when I take it out. That that valve, I think where it's at right now, I think I think we should be able to get to it as it is. So that should be perfect. We're just gonna take that out, and then uh, we have to put the plugs in, put the Schrader valve in, uh, put the seals on, and we'll be ready to put that in. So uh, so far, pretty simple process.
so you'll see here here's our mark that we uh, this is the valve side that we're going to be using so we're just going to flip it 180 degrees to the side that we're not going to be using uh, that comes with a little plug there uh, we just lubricated it with a little bit of oil again off that old filter we're just going to thread it in there and snug it up make sure it's tight all right so we got our plug installed on the side that we're not going to be using for the schrader valve uh, we just ran that in there got it snug it didn't doesn't need to be super tight we lubricated it with a little bit of oil uh, then we went ahead we put our seals on there's one here at the tip and there's one up at the collar we lubricated those with a little bit of oil as well and we're just going to verify that that face seal is there and we we re-lubricated it just to make sure all the seals are wet um, so all we're going to do is screw this in uh, back to where we had it we're not going to over tighten it uh, we're going to use the one inch deep well socket uh, i can't stress enough this doesn't need to be overly tight uh, and a big reason for that or two big reasons really one if you over tighten it you'll crack the housing and or maybe even this and it has a lock to hold it in so it doesn't need to be super tight so we're going to get that in there back to where it was so that our open port is accessible on the side and then with an allen key up here at the top we're just going to tighten that and that's going to lock this into place that way even if it's not super tight it doesn't move so we're going to go ahead and get that installed Okay, so it's nice snug. It actually bottomed out, which I'm happy to see. Uh, and then we have our port for the Schrader valve is open there. So we should be good with that. Now we're just going to go ahead and take our Allen key and tighten down the lock. And that should uh, hold that in place. So next thing, uh, we're just going to get our Schrader valve put on there. I'm actually going to cover this up uh, before we do that just because I don't like the idea of having a bunch of small pieces around an open oil system. You can put the Schrader valve on because if you drop something in there, it's going to be a bad day. Okay, so we're going to put on just for access. This also comes with a 90 degree fitting uh, that you put on first before the Schrader valve. Uh, it fits inside a 15 16 wrench, uh, so you'll be able to screw it on there. Uh, we're going to lubricate it a little bit and then fight it in there. wrench Let's see also with the space we have here we're not going to be able to get that wrench on there
We're gonna pop some of these lines off just to get them out of our way here. More hassle than it's worth. All right, we're just gonna carefully try and get in there with a couple of other different wrenches. And you can't get that to spin a little bit more. It's just currently pointing down. It's gonna work. Pretty tight space in here, and I don't have the strongest fingers, apparently. Just being real careful with it. You might be able to sneak the wrench on there now. Okay, it seems like depending on which way it is facing, that wrench either fits or it doesn't.
working at it. We'll get it. It doesn't need to go much further. It's still kind of almost facing down. See, just depending on the position of this, you can't actually get that wrench on there. Uh, depending on the position of it, you really don't seem to be able to get any wrench on there. A tight spot here. We have that pretty much facing up. It's uh, pointed out that way just a little bit, which I think actually will be perfect. So here we just have the little Schrader valve that we're just gonna install onto that 90 degree adapter. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention earlier, you do need a socket for that. Let's see, it is an 11 for that Schrader valve. I'm going to tighten that up, and it's really, I'm going to make it real tight. It had locking, or uh, Teflon on it anyways. Uh, so we got that threaded on there. It doesn't need to be super tight. Uh, this has a little cap, a little valve stem cap like you would have for your tires. So that up a little bit more and then red the cap on there. Uh cap can really just be finger tight. Doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so like I said, we have the Wix 57045 oil filter. This is the one that uh, the install video that I watched was using. Uh, that was on Northridge 4x4's website. That's where I bought this from. Uh, the directions call out a different Wix filter, but I think in the end it's probably not really a big deal. As long as you're using a good quality filter. And there's other brands of filters you can get as long as they're equivalent to this one. Uh, so we lubricated the seal. Uh, we're going to pull our paper towel out of there. I'm just going to spin this on like a regular oil filter. Uh, really, the hand tight's tight enough on these. Now these vacuum lines are probably going to be in the way. You have to try and fight them back in there or route them around the filter. That's tight enough for an oil filter. And I love this. See these evap lines. Not in a convenient spot for this. I'll just tangled up all weird. This is probably going to be a hassle every time you go to change a filter. They land a gas. Back in there, I'll need more vacuum leaks. Okay, so that's it. That's how you do that. Uh, let's see if the engine cover still fits. I I said I don't normally keep this on here. Uh, let's see if it fits. You know, it really doesn't seem like it does. It actually, I'll tell you what, on this particular filter, it's holding the, the engine cover off. Now, like I said, it's not really a big deal in my opinion. I want to make sure it doesn't hit the hood. I don't think it will. There's got to be some space between there. Actually, not any higher than that there. So, uh, 
and maybe depending on what filter you have it might fit like i said i don't even really leave it on there in my opinion all it's probably doing is holding in heat that i don't need so that's how you do that that's how you install that uh, i'm gonna keep a really close eye on this check it for leaks often uh, at least as it's new here uh new product to me so i want to make sure it's not leaking i'm gonna keep a close eye on this uh, this would be a good time to do an oil change i'm not doing one only because i did one about 400 miles ago so it just doesn't make sense to do one right now um what i'll do i'm going to drive around i actually have a wheeling trip coming up in a couple of days here i'm going to keep a very close eye on it i'll let you guys know how it does with the dry starts uh i'll include a clip here of the dry start this morning before putting this on so you guys can kind of see the noise that i that i was experiencing and then i'll keep an eye on this i'll run this for this wheeling trip and uh, i'll let you guys know how it goes and then uh i think maybe i'll show you guys kind of what you do with the schrader valve to get the oil out of the filter when you go to replace the filter because that's what the schrader valve is there for so uh i hope you guys have enjoyed it up until this point uh stay tuned i'll let you guys know how i feel like it did one more thing that we want to do, actually, we want to prime this and get oil into that filter because I'm sure that filter is going to take even longer to fill now. So what we're going to do to prime this, um, I'm not 100% sure if it's the same scenario in an automatic, mine's a manual. What we're going to do is we're going to hold the clutch in, we're going to hold the gas pedal all the way down to the floor, clutch to the floor, gas to the floor, and we're going to turn it, turn the key, and that's going to make the engine crank over that's going to start moving some oil. We're going to do that twice for about four seconds each, and that should get oil into the filter, get it filled, maybe even do it a little bit longer. Uh, and then from there, we're going to start it up and see what it does. All right, so that, that's primed. It made a little bit of noise when it started, but might not have been even 100% full. And then actually at the same time, I'm sure this doesn't eliminate it 100% because it still has to get oil from the pan to the filter. Um, this is kind of a flaw, in my opinion, in, in the design of this. And this, this helps, but I don't think it's going to eliminate the prime completely. Uh, now that I did run that, though, I'm going to look around there and just make sure it didn't leak and make sure it didn't spew oil everywhere make sure it didn't do anything crazy i want to close my hood i'm going to close it very carefully i don't think it's going to hit that but i'm just going to double check for the first time at least when i do it so i hope you guys enjoyed the video thus far uh stay tuned and i'll let you guys know how it did after a week of wheeling all right so it's been about a week since i installed the oil filter adapter i put maybe 50 or so miles on it um not a whole lot of driving but a lot of starting and stopping because we we went on a couple day wheeling trip so a uh, couple things I did notice, there was some times when I had dry start still, especially in the morning. Um, so it didn't eliminate it completely. It might have made it a little bit better uh, where it did get oil a little bit quicker, but I definitely got dry start and got the real aggressive clattering. So the Jeep's been sitting for about a week now, um, hasn't run. So I'm gonna start it now and we'll see what kind of uh, start we get from that. See if it's the dry start or if it uh, holds its prime for almost a week or so. So there you have it guys. It still clatters a little bit. Um, it clatters for about a second and a half, which is probably an improvement from what it was before. Knowing how these are designed, I'm not surprised it doesn't eliminate completely. I'm a little disappointed because they do claim this product will stop the dry start, but it does not. It just improves it.
the noise you hear there is likely the rockers and the lifters clattering on each other until the lifters are primed. The other thing it could be that noise could be coming from your timing chain because you do have a hydraulic timing chain tensioner. I am a little disappointed it didn't completely solve the problem, but it looks like it's an improvement, so I, I suppose that's a win. I just wish for the, I think, $350 that it cost. Uh, it is a little pricey to not really be solving anything, so, oh well, it is what it is. I don't know if there's really ever going to be a solution for the dry start on these, just knowing how the oil system works, but maybe if another product comes along, I'll give that a try. Uh, until then, I'm just gonna have to put up with the dry start and hope that it doesn't do any catastrophic damage to the vehicle. I appreciate you guys watching the video and following along. I hope you enjoyed it.